Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of One Day in Denmark English Edition. We've already launched the podcast, the One Day in Denmark on creation. Uh, later on, we have figured out, well, there is a demand. English speaking students as well want to study in Denmark. And this is why we have created the podcast One Day in Denmark on English, um, created by Nordic Education. And today, uh, our first guest is Lesse from Aalborg. Uh, he has multiple positions uh, in the Ober Kommune and the region of Northern Denmark. And I would give uh, him um, a little bit more so he can uh, tell you uh, who is he and uh, what is he actually doing. Let's uh, Thank you so much, Leonardo. And thank you for having me on the podcast. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a member of the city council uh, for the party called the Social Democrats, uh, Social Democratic Party in Denmark. And I've been a member since 2014, uh, when I first got elected. Uh, and in the in the council, I uh, have several uh, different positions. Uh, so uh, one of the things uh, I am is the chairman of the educational council. So we're the ones that uh, uh, carry out the concrete strategy of mm -hmm. uh, becoming Denmark's best educational city. Uh, that's our target. And uh, I, I hope we can talk more about that later on. Of course. And besides that, uh, I also uh, I have different chairmanship or uh, part of Volvo Logistics and uh, utility companies with water and sewage. Uh, and then in my uh, professional life, in my daily life, I'm a project manager of the International House, North Denmark, where we work with uh, welcoming, uh, settling in and attracting uh, international students and work workforce from all around the world. Perfect. Sounds like your... Uh... Very much integrated, not only, of course, with uh, with the experts of uh, working with uh, issues that are tackling something that uh, Danes would uh, be interested in, but as well very much with the international community uh, uh, in Oberg and the region, which is uh, amazing. So you you talked about the um, the municipality, and and um, we have and we know Oberg is becoming more and more and more popular as a student destination uh, for internationals. We have uh, University College of Northern Denmark. We have uh, uh, other institutions as well as Aalborg uh, University. So could you try to sell uh, the municipality to students? And could you tell us what, what does the city and the, the municipality has to offer uh, to students uh, who, who, who maybe wish to, uh, to start their studies uh, this or, or next year? Yeah, so uh, our city is... Uh something uh, it's, it's a very progressive student city uh, i'm uh, i'm born and raised here i lived uh, for some time in africa but i'm born and raised in Alba, and i have seen a, a huge uh, transformation uh, in uh, both in the in terms of the population so we have a very young population but uh, we have also seen a, an increase in the globalization of Alba. Mm -hmm. Uh, that comes with all the company, the, the private sector is very much um, internationalized. The, the whole cultural uh, sector of Alba, uh, with the, the theater and the, the music house and so on, are very globalized. Uh, so we have a, a strategy of uh, which and slogan, which is Alba sees the world. And this means that we want to attract uh, the world to Alba, but also sending Alba out in the world. So attracting uh, companies, investors coming here, settling in, can create growth and uh, uh, work and jobs. Uh, and also sending Alba out in the world goes for exporting, sending students abroad for internships and so on, Erasmus as well. So uh, we are uh, very much focused on globalization and education. That's amazing. And I... As I as well live in Aalborg, um, I'm aware that some big companies are in Aalborg, which their uh, and their corporate language is English. So there are opportunities for young professionals to stay and work, um, uh, not only on Danish, of course, but as well on English uh, and maybe on their mother tongue language if the company wants to maybe expand to 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 a different uh, country, different market. So I see this as a as a great opportunity, and I know a lot of people who come to Aalborg. They are like. Um, Especially with the fjord, they they fell in love. Uh, they uh, they fell in love with the city, and they say, "I love Aalborg because it's not as big as as Copenhagen, you know, that this uh, metropolis. But but it's like the right fit for them. So 
This is something that's very much connected with uh, other municipality uh, striving to be and their goal being the best educational city in Denmark. So can you tell us a little bit more about the ongoing educational strategy, uh, 2019 to 2022, and what can we expect from Aalborg uh, as a student city in the years to come? So uh, I, I believe you, having a little historical perspective on our educational strategy is mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. important in this regard, because we had, uh, during the, the, the beginning of the millennium, uh, we had uh, a focus on attracting students to come to Aalborg. So that was the first phase, you can say, of yeah. educational strategy, uh, motivating students to come here. And that's when we established the, the educational council in the mm -hmm. municipality and had a, a cross-sectoral partnership with all the different educational institutions, private companies, uh, students, etc. So many different actors came into play. We then developed it to, uh, uh, to a more stay-orientated uh, strategy where we wanted them to stay here after they graduated. And we succeeded in that. We can see that the, the numbers are increasing, that how many students want to, to have a life here in, the, in Aalborg and in our region of Denmark after they graduate. So the third phase now is uh, finding jobs for them. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you can see we've succeeded in attracting, we succeeded in making them stay. Now the last part is making sure they get a career in, uh, in Aalborg. So it's very much now focused on career and uh, making sure that during their studies that they get um, insights in the labor market, they get experience, they maybe have an internship uh, semester project collaboration with a company, or at least that they, what uh, University College of North Denmark say, real life education. Yeah. So the things yeah. you're studying has an impact on a company or has an impact on the society. And what would be the role actually of the municipality in this whole uh, journey the student has? Like, uh, I, I know that there is the municipality, there is the region, and then there is the, the focusing or the whole government. Mm -hmm. And where does actually, how much actually influence does the municipality has on its own uh, agendas? And is it governed by somebody else? Or you can actually really like focus, okay, in this region, we need more of this. Hence, we are going to increase budget for this specific uh, field. Is this something that, that's possible or? Uh, it, it's it, the, uh, the primary school is, uh, is the municipality's responsibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But after that, it is uh, either independent organizations or controlled somehow by the, the government, by the state. Yeah. So uh, we can do partnerships with them. And yeah. that's what we have really have done. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, student jobs has been a big issue in, in Aalborg, in, in our region. So we have uh, created over 1,000 student jobs alone in Aalborg municipality, uh, because that was an, an issue, not getting uh, work experience during your studies. And we can see that there's a high level of chances getting a full-time job if you've had a, a relevant student job during your studies. Uh, so that, that's one of the initiatives we've started in collaboration. But we are not decision makers or lawmakers uh, towards the education institutions. Only the primary school, we have the responsibilities. Yeah, I could actually mention one very cool project uh, that was initiated, I believe, uh, definitely at the UCN. And that was that students who maybe have a student job outside of Aalborg, they can rent a car or they can actually take a car from the campus, drive to their work, of course, work, then come back to Aalborg with the same rental car. And, and that actually helped a lot of students actually and local communities around Aalborg to have international students, Danish students to work part-time uh, for, for internationals. That's important for SU, for Danish mm -hmm. students as well to have some extra income. So I think there is these extra initiatives, one of them being the International House, which you are the project leader of. Um, so uh, what what is the International House? Um, why, why is it actually important to have it uh, in Aalborg, in, in the region of Northern Denmark? Um, and I, I know that interna uh, that Aalborg wants to be international hub. So, so could you tell us a little bit more about that? Where does the international house uh, fit in this whole? Uh, mm. um, yeah, and I, I will tell about that. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. just mention a little detail why I think we differ a 
a lot from the other educational big cities around Denmark, all mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, Odense, or Copenhagen, and so on. Yeah, uh, it's the way that we uh, focus on student apartments, uh, and uh, not only student apartments close to the educational institutions, like mm-hmm. around uh, campus in eastern part, where University College North Denmark Tech College, and some of the bigger uh, educations out there, Aalborg University as well. Uh, but we we the city center, the best locations in the city is reserved for uh, student apartments. And that's also something I would like to mention. Uh, we have a roof or your head guarantee, which has now been developed to a, a apartment guarantee. So whenever you are a student coming here, you'll be guaranteed a, 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 an apartment because we have uh, available apartments in, in our city. And that's a big struggle for Aarhus, Copenhagen, maybe also, but I know for sure for Aarhus and Copenhagen. Definitely. Uh, so the International House, uh, going back to your question, is we are s- sort of making sure that the, the welcoming aspect for you as students coming here is, uh, is uh, all right. Uh, so you don't need to go around many different places to get your paperwork done. You can get into one single spot uh, would be which would be the one point of entry and get all your papers done at one yeah. time uh, that is more uh, efficient for the student and hopefully also a better user experience uh, we can always optimize the user experience so there's a lot of things we can do better uh, but one, one thing we also have done is a digitalization of uh, your bookings so you will you know that when you come you will not be in a queue with 90 others you know yeah. when you come you have will be served within half an hour and get all your things done. And that, that's also a big uh, plus in, the, in terms of efficiency. But uh, the International House is also like, we see ourselves as a gateway to life in North Denmark. So hopefully through us, you will also link up with a relevant uh, uh, cultural or hobby or interest you might have. Yeah. Uh, we do different fairs. Uh, sports and culture fair, diversity evening at the zoo, many different events where you can get a grasp of your local community and see if there's any interest organization, civil society organizations that might interest you. And, and connect with fellow with internationals as well while you do that. So that's, that's very great. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, uh, also we, we form a collaboration with the educational institutions regarding career programs. And we can see that the ones who have been in the career programs have a greater chance of finding a job. Uh, it's been quite successful. The, the, the graduates, uh, the alumni of the, the career programs who found a job. Uh, so this is also one of the things being the binding link between the education yeah. institutions and the companies. And that's something that's we're increasing as well. And I think that when, when you're explaining this, of course, as I was an international who arrived was as well confused in the beginning. I think having one point contact is very important because you might be overwhelmed with the bureaucracy in the beginning when you arrive and you don't of course want to make something wrong because you're like, oh my God, if I do something wrong, uh, will they expel me from university? You know, people go through a lot of these uh, thoughts and questions, but it's good to have, have a friendly face that can welcome you, that can explain you and really guide you and help you not only in the beginning, but throughout your uh, studies, as well as afterwards. I know you have Job Monday, for example, where every Monday you can really uh, try to find some relevant jobs uh, in your industry. And I think, uh, I think that's definitely something that will prompt a lot of uh, internationals and, of course, Danes to stay in Oldberg. Mm-hmm. Um, Studying is, is, is one sphere of our lives here in Aalborg, in, in Northern mm. Denmark. And of course, besides the city being focused on the best youth city in Denmark, there is a strong focus on making the city a green innovation hub as well mm. uh, for young entrepreneurs as well. So how yeah. is the municipality supporting these ideas and what are the initiatives that uh, will make this uh, a reality? So uh, uh, I believe in general, the mindset I have personally and also the mindset we work with international house north denmark is that uh, diversity uh, creates mm-hmm. innovation yeah. innovation creates growth and uh, and that will benefit the whole society uh, so uh, i see myself as an international i don't believe it's the it's your passport or your nationality that defines whether you are an international 
I'm, uh, I'm also an international, I see myself as an international citizen. Uh, I'm Danish, yes, and I live in Denmark, but I'm part of a, a, a global society as well. Uh, and uh, I believe a lot of uh, Danes are also very interested in, in traveling the world. Uh, I believe uh, one of our most famous authors, Hans Christian Andersen, he said uh, to travel is to live. Uh, and this is very much a, a Danish uh, mindset as well. We are uh, global thinking uh, uh, deep down. And uh, when I was an expat as well, uh, I, 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 I tried also to, in Uganda where I lived, I tried to be part of the society and contribute. And we see that the, the, the expats we have in, in North Denmark are co contributing a lot with innovation and uh, startups. Uh, and we can see uh, when we have startup competitions, a lot of the participants of uh, with uh, internationals who are, don't have a Danish passport, uh, and they have, they are really contributing a lot with the um, new angle, new perspectives on mm -hmm. uh, startups, uh, and and that's why we we have we're focusing on this. Yeah. Uh, we approximately say in the startup club which is all about municipalities, uh, public offer where you can become part of an environment and network, but also get uh, personal help. Yeah. It's uh, a third, so like 33% of the, uh, the consultations are in English. So it's around 200 consultations they do in English. Uh, and within the ICT sector, the service sector, the restaurant catering sector, internationals are very good in all about starting up these businesses. That's great. And, and that's, that's one of the things that uh, I guess it's, it's great to communicate is not to be mm -hmm. afraid to actually go and ask and, and really inform yourself because it might not be that you, you think like, oh, maybe they're just doing it for Danes or oh, maybe it's only on Danish. No, actually, like you can mm -hmm. talk on English. Danes don't have problems with English. You are, the, you are a good example of that as well. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> It, it, it's really a, an open, an open, an open uh, field with open cards, and you can really uh, yes. contribute uh, a lot if you if you would like and, and follow follow your passions. And I, I think that's 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 very great. So for the end, um, there are a lot of uh, internationals who will watch this and will be interested to study in Aalborg, uh, in northern Denmark. What kind of message do you want to to tell them? Uh, like, if you would sum up. Olborg and, and this municipality, if you have any message to, to, to tell them. Mm. So I believe what we can offer here is uh, a chance to relish your dreams. Um, Denmark is often known for uh, social trust and uh, a good welfare system. Yeah. But actually when we look at different uh, uh, startup rankings, doing business in Denmark is actually, we are always in the top, we've been number one, uh, some years, I'm not sure the latest position what we have, but we are definitely in the top. And this is because it's quite easy to establish your own company. It's a, you also, if you want to study your, your, your dream studies, I believe we have a broad and wide diverse of educational opportunities in Aalborg, uh, which can uh, which have something for everyone, I believe. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. the most specialist uh, areas of uh, studies might not be in the elbow, but we have many of them, especially within engineering and ICT. Uh, we are quite known for that. Uh, so coming here, studying here uh, uh, with the, all the great educational offers we have is obviously the, the, the grounding factor. Why choose to come to Alba? But doing your studies, we also want you to be welcomed. And we want you, whether you choose to travel the world after you graduate, you will always be ambassadors of Olbo. So we have very much this ambassador kind of angle to our yeah, international yeah. students. Um, and uh, it's quite cheap as well to live in Olbo compared to some of the other places. True, uh, true. It's a 20 minute town as well. So it's it's quite easy also to get around, especially if you have a bike. Uh, mm. I believe we yeah. have a very good biking infrastructure. We have also a, a green and a, a public transport, which is being invested in heavily. And uh, I think what everybody's, everybody's talking about the uh, United, United Nations uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which is a lot about green transition, how to make, protect yeah. the climate uh, and the environment. And uh, 
I believe we can be Denmark's green capital when it comes to that. that that's our my ambition and the, the mayor's ambition as well to, to become Denmark's green capital. And uh, this is very much because of the educational institution that we are good at collaborating with the, the private sector and the educational sector and the, the public sector, uh, starting up job, starting up uh, projects, initiatives, yeah. um, district cooling projects, many different uh, projects can be mentioned in, in this rank where, where it's been possible. And in these collaboration, the, the international students contribute a lot. They come in with a totally different mindset and innovate the whole uh, process there. Uh, so uh, these different factors, our ability to uh, have good partnership, we are dependent on each other and the, the globalization, I think, is some of our strongest uh, competences in Albor. Amazing. And I think this is a very good story, building it from the foundation where you talk about education and then going up and really building your dreams. Thank you very much uh, for uh, being our first guest in uh, the podcast One Day in Denmark. We very much uh, can't wait for all the new students to arrive uh, in the upcoming years. And of course, I am uh, very much sure that International House can't wait to meet them as well and help them uh, along, along, along the way. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we will be, of course, having uh, multiple more episodes in the future. So be sure to follow us um, mm -hmm. and follow International House and uh, the municipality. There will be uh, additional links in the description of the podcast or as well as on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check out the International House. You can, of course, find all the relevant information for studying and working in Denmark, in Northern Denmark. Um, until the next time, see you.